Hi guys, um, welcome to this video. Uh, hopefully you've watched the previous video which is a review of the T45 Goshawk by Dino Catanio. If you haven't, I'd highly recommend it because it gives an outline of this aircraft. But uh, what I'm going to do with this video is something that you wouldn't normally see on FSX, uh, which is going to be a low flying uh, video through Wales. Um, and this aircraft is awesome for it and there's a couple of reasons why it's awesome for it and I shall go through them now. The first thing is it allows you to use default uh, FSX flight plan so I can put in plan, it comes up with a line, that's my flight plan and if I click GPS it tells the system that I want the GPS, i.e. this line, to be entered into my system which is good. What you can now see is that's our heading and this little line over here is where the GPS is telling us where to go and because it's in navigation mode it's telling us our next waypoint is 22 and a half miles away job done there we go um, that next waypoint is Cosford which is an airbase in the UK so here we go let's get airborne and see how we get on so advancing the throttle power comes up 75 percent and brakes off away we go now as I said in the previous video uh, one of the things with this is that we've got a flap limiting speed of 200 knots and a gear limiting speed of 200 knots I have got Active Sky Next involved, so this is genuine UK weather. Got no idea which way the wind's coming from, but there we go. Uh, the Sims put me on uh, on the active runway, so there we go. Lifting about 135 knots, there we go. Rotate, gear up, flaps up, and pitching appropriately for speed, so we can accelerate. A little bit of nose down trim. Whoa, that's a bit too much, I think. Let's get ourselves back into a good state of affairs. And I happen to know that our first heading is about 300 thereabouts. So uh, once we're at a safe speed, we can pull a bit high, harder. Um, and in fact, in the Welsh mountains, we're going to a place called the Mac Loop, um, which is by a place called Macintleth, uh, I think it's pronounced. Uh, I'm not very good with my Welsh place names, and uh, I think a lot of people outside Wales aren't particularly good at that. But what we're going to do is we're going to turn and fly around there. You can see we're going to track crawl along the line. Um, and basically, as you get into the mountains, this thing allows you to pull quite a fairly uh, high amount of G. There's our little ticker marker coming in. Uh, now we can get ourselves stable. We're going to fly at about 420 knots, uh, which is one of the speeds that fast jet trainees in the UK would use. Um, the reason is it's easily divisible by 60 so you can say that it's uh, 7 miles a minute for example um, which allows the mental arithmetic to work that little bit better so a little bit more power try and maintain our speed there we go a little bit more power a little bit more power still um, it just needs the, the power needs feathering because it's very very sensitive um, as I say our first point in theory according to FSX we're flying over the centre of Birmingham here which um, yeah, never mind. Uh, until I manage to get some UK scenery installed, this is what we've got. However, what I will say is the topography of the mountains in Wales is actually fairly accurate, so um, we'll get a good indication there. I'm just going to turn left a little bit and we'll uh, try and on top Cosford. Now, if you look down in the bottom right of the HUD, you can see we've got 16 and a bit miles to go, and it's going to take us 2 minutes 20 seconds to get there. Um, so what I'll probably do at this point is I'll just fast forward to the point where we're just about to go into the mountains and I shall see you in a moment hi guys welcome back um, we're pretty much coming up to the Welsh mountains uh, they're not quite like the Alps they're uh, not quite that high um, but I do have some familiarity with them from real life so um, you'll have to bear with me that this is probably the best place for me to play around at the minute a couple of things I'm going to explain um, you can see down here we've got just over a minute and a half to go to our turn point. Um, what I've done is I've put in a number of custom waypoints um, to follow as closely as I can the contours, the valleys that I'm going to be flying down. Now FSX it's Flight Planner um, and I've actually used a program called G-Plan I think it's called which basically allows you to uh, use a map, a topographical map in order to put your flight plan waypoints in uh, and it gener generates an FSX flight plan which you then load up. Now of course the difficulty is that that flight plan has got straight lines, mountains do not. So what I then have to do is I have to interpret that straight line and the turn points into what I see in front of me. So you may well see me flip between the two. Um, the main reason being 
is that this little uh, head up uh, or marker for the turn points isn't quite as accurate as you would potentially need um, it doesn't it basically it turns too early and doesn't register where it should be all the time the second thing is that you've got your altimeter over here in the UK we generally fly at 250 feet as a fast jet um, which uh, I don't know FSX doesn't do a great job of replicating that but it's good enough for what we're doing um, but we'd aim to fly at 250 feet there or thereabouts and then the final thing, yeah, turn points coming up. The final thing is that you've got your barometric altitude up here. Um, so this is where we start interpreting. This is our turn point, but the valley is over there that you can see. So we're going to turn actually into the valley. Um, you can see our heading bug has already turned, but what we've we got is quite a decent leg. So at this point, uh, what I would add is you can actually fly this thing quite aggressively. Um, it does allow you to fly it with a great deal of um, vigour, which is a great word, I like that word. Um, so we're going to go down into the valleys now. and You can see we're just slightly right of track, but the valley is allowing us to do that. Um, and as far as a straight line goes, it's pretty straight, but we're probably going to end up slightly right of track. Because as I say, FSX likes straight lines in its flight plan. We and nature with its valleys, however, do not. So... This is fairly gentle at the moment. You can see the mountains start to rise ahead of us. Um, we do have to come left back onto track. So we'll look to come through this little gap here and try and get ourselves back onto track. And I can pull fairly aggressively. Uh, we got up to about 3G there, so nothing too dramatic. Now you can see it's starting to follow a road, uh, which is a good indicator that we're in the right place because FSX um, puts roads pretty much in the right place. I'm going to go down a little bit into this valley here. Now, as I say, the... Uh, whoop, didn't see that tree coming. Um, FSX likes straight lines, valleys do not. So, quick check, see where we're at. I've got quite a little uh, run through. You can see the heading markers jumping around a little bit. That's uh, that's as to, as expected. Uh, I don't quite know what the range is on the, uh, on the display, but certainly on the HUD it's telling me I've got about 11 miles to go to the next point seems a bit much that's because it's already changed we're going to turn left in a moment but we can't do so till the hills out of the way so compared to fsx we're turning slightly late with its flight plan but i know in reality we're turning just about right how about it's not that bad a turn so we're going to go uh, let me see we're going to go down here and we're going to go to the right of this hilltop see how far off track we are we're not that far off track but obviously i can't I'm trying to stay as low as I as I can, 250 feet there or thereabouts. Um, but obviously it's visually judged, it's not that accurate. So once we're around this hill, we'll see where we go. There's a nice little valley here to follow. And this is what I'm saying, is it's interpretation between your straight line flight plan and the topography of the map. So we've got a nice little bit of a depression there oh look there's a road that means we're probably where I intended to be I actually took the routing off a, off a genuine map um, and it's a, a low flying map that I managed to acquire many years ago so it's not really usable for navigation because it's not um, not accurate enough however um, looking at the map one of the things I did was I got us a flight down uh, Lake Barla which is a very uh, well-known lake in Wales And we're going to, uh, we're just going to close in on this a little bit. Right, so here's Lake Barla. We're going to turn and follow it. Now the turn isn't that uh, significant, but I know from the map that we are in effect following this. And actually the fast jets do follow this lake. They do come screaming down here at, uh, at the best part of, uh, I think they do it about 360 knots. So we're being a little bit uh, more energetic, so to speak. Now looking at the map, um, or at the uh, GPS I should say, we're on this heading for quite a bit. Um, so my guess is that uh, if you look where the, um, the marker is, the flight path vector, my guess is we're going down one of the valleys here. Uh, now I know there's a loop in here somewhere and you'll see me having to uh, work hard to interpret that. Um, but fundamentally... Uh, I'm trying to use the topography to stay as low as I can and that does mean there's some fairly hard turns involved um, and if I get a chance to point out where we are uh, I shall do so so you can see the loop coming up ahead uh, on the GPS there look 
we're going to do it anti-clockwise which actually in real life is the way that you would fly it um, so as we come down here there's actually three entry points you uh, if you were a fast jet you'd come in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to position myself slightly right out to the right hand side of what I can see is a hill here now I've got the road so I got a bit too much altitude there we are going to go to the left of that mountain now with um, with the weather system that I've got with the uh, active sky next is going to give us a bit of the turbulence and I can say from uh, personal experience the turbulence in Wales is not that pleasant so let's just come around this way a little bit and get ourselves lower don't really want to crest over that ridge if we can avoid it so let's just have a quick look at where we are yeah we're coming in nicely so there's the primary valley we're aiming for we're going to follow this road we a little bit of uh, turbulence there get our height down now we're at 450 feet on the rad out but that'll come down quite quickly now before we go in we've only got a short stint before the next turn point so I've got to find that turn point the hill on the right now is where a lot of aircraft spotters uh, come to watch low-flying jets in reality so we a little bit close there I don't profess to be an expert in low flying but uh, we're turning left around this valley here and I know from uh, experience this is a quite a tight turn so all I've got to do is get round it and hope I don't black out there is a lot of G coming on there follow the road and we're going down this little bit of a valley here quick check of the map it goes round to the right of this spur so we're coming round here make sure we keep our uh, altitude over the hills it's nearly caught us out a couple of times there's the road where are we going now a little bit further on so we're going to go around here and then round that spur yeah once we're uh, around this hill here we just pull around to the right give ourselves a good uh, go at it yeah we're turning left down this valley here there's the road a lot of um, roads follow the valleys so it's quite helpful yeah we need to keep coming left we're a little bit high there so we're going to come back down into the valley nestle down into that so we're going to go left in a minute i reckon that uh, interpreting that we're going to go just beyond this hill this spur of trees on the left It will probably say that we've gone beyond our turn point. Yes, we have. It's about, what, 30, 40 degrees of a left turn. So we can safely say that uh, if I turn there and aim about there, that should be about our 30, 40 degrees. Let's have a look down. Yep, spot on. Happy with that. Short run, though. So past this spur uh, that's coming out the left towards the road, we're going to go around to the left. Uh, this is a 90 degree turn so it's going to be quite a hard pull and actually this is putting us back in back towards the loop where we came in so yeah this is this is quite a tight turn now you can see the gap starting to arrive on the left uh, we're going to pull tight into that we've got quite a long run after it so round she comes and looking for the, uh, the valley there it is that's what we're after fairly straight line we're going to go to the left here round again that's the valley we're looking for there through this point here as we look down yet yeah, we're slightly right of track but we're following the valleys so uh, we're restricted by the terrain for where we can fly let's just get ourselves down here a little bit the turbulence is kicking off massively I'm obviously going a bit lower than 250 feet okay so from here I'm just going to go around this piece of high ground here just to the left I say high ground it's not particularly high it's not like it's uh, you know Mount Etna or something ridiculous or Vesuvius um, it's literally what you see is what you get with it so we're pretty much on track we need to um, go down this valley that's just to the uh, left of the nose 
and then what we're doing is we're actually going to go to the coast um, and we're going to uh, in fact what I'll do is because we're going to the coast I'll go to where the water is the water is in the low point in the low ground so we'll uh, we'll take that we're going to go to the uh, the estuary which goes out onto the uh, Irish Sea we're going to turn right and then we're going to fly up to Valley we're going to do an approach and a landing at Valley so uh, I'll probably skip ahead with that bit um, just purely out of the fact you don't want to see me uh, no doubt you don't want to see me fly a straight line along a coastline. That's not the most exciting thing on earth. So uh, here we go. Let's just follow the river. There's a lot of um, if you're doing uh, VFR flying, visual flight rules. Um, a lot of the times, if you're quite low to the ground, even in general aviation, if you're sort of 1,500 feet, uh, you also fly IFR, um, which uh, is short for saying I, fo I follow roads rivers and railways because they're lovely uh, they're lovely features to follow if you're low because they stand out there clear and whatnot that's you know instead of flying IFR in the airways you fly IFR uh, I follow roads rivers and railways so here we come we're coming around 250 feet we're going to fly over where the red lights are that's Carnarvon um, and then we're going to route to Valley so uh, I shall see you in a moment Welcome back again guys, um, the large green patch you can see in the distance is the Isle of Anglesey uh, which is up where RAF Valley is and that's where we're going to fly to, um, it's just out to the left of the nose, it's quite close to the coastline so uh, it's relatively straightforward to find. Um, so with that in mind there's just a couple of things I'd like to point out as we, uh, as we close on it, we've got about two minutes to go to get it get there it's echo golf oscar victor you can see on the bottom right it's very nice it even tells you what the uh, the waypoints are when you uh, set them in with the uh, g plan um, we've lifted up a little bit to uh six seven hundred feet um just to give us a bit better view what we're going to do is we're going to do a run in and break i have absolutely no idea what the wind is um it's very poor of me not to have checked it but there we go so i'm going to look for the runway lights of raf valley which is currently 10 miles away um, and we're going to see where we go from there. Um, what I'll do is a run in and break, which is a fairly standard uh, routine procedure for military fast jets. Uh, the reason is that what it allows them to do is come into the circuit and to bleed off speed very quickly onto a downwind leg. So uh, I'm expecting it to show red lights for the pappies all the way through on the basis that it's a low level flight. But what we do is we come in on the runway heading, we get to approximately halfway down the runway, we do a fairly sharp turn round to the left, uh, expecting to bleed off quite a bit of speed, um, and we're aiming to get under 200 knots, so we can put our gear and flaps down, and then we do a curved uh, finals, uh, or a curved turn onto finals, and we expect to come in on short finals, um, so uh, unlike an airliner which would have a fairly long approach long final is anything about eight miles short final in an airliner is anything at about four mile so we're looking at coming in um, significantly uh, lower than that and significantly faster so I'll just line myself up with the runway now the runway heading I assume is going to be about 300 we're still doing about 300 knots um, and it does look very spectacular when people do it in real life. Um, so, but without an audience and not being at an air show, I don't suspect we're going to get the uh, the same kind of uh, response. Um, but here we go. Anyway, let's see how we get on. So we're at 320 knots, which is a reasonable speed. I have to say, from up here, that looks like an incredibly short runway. Um, but anyway, with 320 knots, close the throttle and round we go. I would expect to get up to a circuit height of probably about a thousand to fifteen hundred feet. Speed's bleeding back nicely. I expect to pull round onto about one five zero, something like that. Might have to add a little bit of power there just to arrest the speed coming off that quickly. Just bring the nose round a little bit more. Let's have a look at where we're at. That's not bad. So I need to trim a little bit. I'm going to bring more of the speed off. We're just about coming to a, a beam, the, uh, the downwind end. So as we come off, first stage of flaps, gear going down, the speed's going to wash away quite a lot. We're at about a thousand feet and we're going to do a curve turn on to final now. Uh, making sure the speed's not bleeding away too fast and we do want some descent. So we're going to initially set about 160 knots. Uh, it's requiring a little bit of back trim now. <coughs> 
just position ourselves yeah that's looking nice at the minute so we've increased speed to 170 and we've got a slight climb on which is uh, which is not particularly great we'll at least make sure we're not going to climb back towards 160 knots yeah that's looking nice descending a little bit quick so raise the nose a little bit of power a little bit high according to the pappies however I expect that's going to uh, change we've not had to use the speed brake you see to uh, to manage our turn we're coming back onto glide slope nicely still at 160 knots so we're going to start to close the throttle now uh, we can put full flaps down so yeah gear down three greens now we try to avoid being on uh, a closed throttle because otherwise the engine spool up time is too great so we want to be at about 60% power we need to get ourselves properly lined up with the runway not messing around as we are the flight path vector is very useful now because you can see that it tells us exactly where we're going to hit we're coming in at about 135 knots which is good and we expect to close the throttle over the sh threshold and bleed the speed off back to about 130 knots so here we go closing the throttle just lifting the nose slightly 128 knots 125 and we'll see if we actually get a semi-decent landing out of this and that's not bad I'll take that and nicely on the brakes try and retain our center line uh, we don't want to put ourselves off the side of the runway a little bit of a wobble because my uh, rudder pedals still aren't set up quite correctly but nonetheless we are down and safe and I hope you guys enjoyed that flight something a little bit different um, rather than the usual uh, beacon to beacon Airbus A320 or whatever it just shows you that if you get hold of some maps and add it to programs like G-Plan uh, and awesome aircraft like this T-45, you can uh, put yourself into a low-level flight and enjoy hooning around the mountains. Um, and with that, guys, I shall speak to you soon. Take care.